Thanks, Norts, and thanks everyone for coming. Um, today is, a, is a, big, a big day for our football club, obviously, and a, you know, a change of direction in some ways. But um, ultimately, with Connor announcing his, uh, his extension, and Zach just recently announcing his, his extension, we've also made a decision to, uh, to announce our leadership group for the, uh, the 2024 season. Uh, and that will be with Connor being our captain for 2024 and Zach being our vice captain, supported by a slightly larger leadership group with Willem Drew, Sam Powell Pepper and Dan Houston supporting them in those roles. Connor will be our eighth AFL captain uh, at this level and he'll take over from Tom who's in the room. It's great to see Tom's in the room to, to uh, hand over the reins to, to step up and, and wear the, uh, the number one for the Port Adelaide Football Club. Again, with Timmy in the room, we can see some people that are are pretty important in the history of this football club. It's a big moment and uh, you know, a moment that we're really proud of. A great opportunity for us as a football club to uh, set a new direction with our youth and our leadership. And I think it gives us in a, and puts us in a really strong position to push forward. The club is in a really healthy and strong position and are now being led and supported uh, by our most senior players still in the group. But these two boys will now take over the role. So I'll hand to them and for you to any questions that you may have for those on their announcements. Yeah, it's obviously a very exciting time for not only me personally, but my family, um, but also the wider playing group and club. So um, I'm just excited really just to get into next season. Um, obviously made some pretty major changes with our leadership group and um, I, think, I think we can bring a, a bit of excitement and young energy to the group and hopefully take us uh, to some success over the next few years. When did you actually find out? Uh, I've been talking about it for a while now, so um, I guess the end of next year I've been doing a little bit of work as, along with Zach through the leadership group last year, um, just trying to learn a few more things about leadership and what it takes and I guess through the off-season had some conversations with the senior people at our football club and uh, they let us know that they would like Zach and I to, to step up and do the role um, after Tommy Jonas, so um, yeah, I, I was obviously on board with that and I'm super excited to just get underway and um, see what the future holds. And what have you learned about yourself as a leader, particularly over the past 12 months? A lot. Uh, there's, yeah, there's a lot of different things that I guess comes with being a leader and Tom's been great. Um, I've been able to use him as a bit of a sounding board to ask a lot of questions for, but also Travis Boak, who's been a previous captain, and Ollie Wines as well. So we've got some great leaders at our football club that I've been able to bounce ideas off of. Um, but I feel like I'm ready now. Um, I'm still only 23, but I feel like I'm a mature 23-year-old and ready to take this club forward and hopefully lead it to some success. Eight years is a long time. How easy was it to make the decision to sign up for that period? Yeah, there was never doubt in any in my mind that I wanted to be at this club for um, for basically my entire career, um, hopefully. So, yeah, I was lucky enough to have some great people around me, my manager, Ben, ben, <coughs> ben Williams, and um, his wife, Jade. So um, they've done some great work, and the decision the decision was really easy when I got to, uh, when it got to that stage of talking about contracts. And um, for me, it was the longer the better. I want to be here for my entire career, and now I can focus solely on um, doing what it takes to, um, to take the club to some success. I know most draftees probably aren't thinking about the captaincy and taking that on one day, but when did, it kind of, when did that seed kind of get planted in your mind that it might be something you want to do and, and something you wanted to pursue? Uh, probably a couple of years ago. I think um, it, it almost comes upon you a little bit when you start playing well, which makes things a little bit easier to feel a bit more comfortable and part of the group. and. Um, I think I've always been that sort of personality that wants to um, wants to lead people and make other people better. So, yeah, probably a couple of years ago, and um, that obviously got fast tracked a fair bit last year with Tommy um, retiring. So, um, yeah, it's uh, come to a head at the moment, and um, now I'm just excited to get into the role and see what see what happens. We know you've got a tight relationship with Zach. How important that you're in a position like this where he's effectively your right hand man. <laughs> Yeah, it's, uh, it's probably the best case scenario for me personally to have um, best, best mate as right-hand man and um, we obviously got drafted together and have a, have a really close relationship both on and off the field and um, we're slightly different personalities which I think is going to be a, a strength for us as well going forward and um, along with the wider leadership group that um, was announced today, I feel like we've got such a great mix of characters and 
Um, like you said, we're, we've got a great relationship, Zach and I. So, um, yeah, can't wait to lead this club forward with, with one of my best mates. It's awesome. How does your pre-game speech go? <laughs> Might have to get in front of the mirror over the next few weeks and <laughs> have a bit of a go, but um, uh, I think I'll probably make it up on the spot and see what happens. Just in general, what type of leader do you think you would be? Well, I think that's, uh, that's probably um, up for discussion. Um, I'm not sure and I haven't been a captain of a senior football club before, so um, I'm excited to evolve into to whatever leader that takes me to be. I feel like I've got great relationships with everyone at the football club, not only the players, but also um, the wider the wider club. So, yeah, I'm probably not as stern or um, straight down the line as Tommy Jonas. I prefer to be a bit, um, a bit more of a person that chucks the arm around the younger players. And um, I've also got relationships with the younger and older playing group, which I think is, uh, is a benefit. So, yeah, I'll try not to change. And... My personality, I'm sure, will come out over the, over the next few years, and um, yeah, I'm not sure what it will be, but I'm excited. You mentioned some of the like Jonas, Boke, those names. Are there any other leaders who have shaped the, the type of leader you are, whether they're different sports or people you just watched and maybe haven't met? But are there other leaders who have kind of shaped your leadership personality? Yeah, 100%. Um, probably the number one is my my dad, um, obviously. Having a great relationship with your father is pretty crucial to um, to growing into a man and um, has shaped my personality a fair bit as well. So um, I, I'm really grateful for everything that he's given me over the years and also my mum as well. So um, they've been two great role models for me. Um, I've done a, a little bit of work with Travis Head over the last couple of years, um, him being a South Australian, um, obviously a leader as well. So. Um, yeah, I could go on for days. I've got heaps, heaps of people that have um, reached out and um, have been kind enough to offer a chat or a coffee or just for me to ask questions. So, um, yeah, I'm really, I'm really grateful for those people. What's the work with Travis Head involved? What's that, sorry? What, what has the work with Travis Head involved? Uh, more someone that I can just reach out to for questions. Uh, more than anything, when Nathan Bassett was at the club, he set us up with someone outside the football club to... Um, to learn a bit of extra leadership stuff off and um, I, I love my cricket so that was um, a good relationship for me and um, when he's back in Adelaide where I would catch up and just have a discussion about um, not only leadership but just life in general and any questions that I've got. You mentioned before you haven't ever seen your football club before, have you, have you done it a little bit of junior ranks? Yeah, a little bit throughout juniors is clearly a, a lot different to being captain of an AFL side but um, I think my dad has um, yeah, helped mould me throughout my juniors, coached me for a lot of years in my juniors and um, was able to push me, I guess, to be a bit more of a leader of um, the playing group and um, I'm seeing the benefit of that now. Ken, what does it say about the direction of the club, of a player of Connor's quality, saying that he wants to spend the rest of his career? I think it's a, an enormous endorsement for the club, obviously, and, and not just Connor, but Zach and all the boys. I mean, we've had a number of announcements over the last week. And we've always been, um, in my time, certainly very good at, at maintaining the people that we need to maintain at our football club. The, the culture of this footy club is really strong. Ultimately, um, that, gets, that gets marked ultimately by success. We haven't been able to quite get to that level, but, but we've certainly got a very strong football club. And a lot of good people work in this football club. And now we've got an, another two new young leaders of our football club that suggests that we're in really capable hands, a really strong footy club, looking forward to the challenges of 24. Connor, Connor mentioned when he sort of realised that he might want to be captain one day. When did you think this could be a future captain of the club? Uh, it's, pretty, oh, it's been pretty clear from the time these two boys arrived that they've got leadership credentials and, and what they both bring is competitive spirit on the training track, the way they go about it, the way they play. And their performance is ultimately the, the thing that sets you apart sometimes and these two play at really high levels. I think the, the pleasing part for us is as a club when we make this decision you know, we asked all our players at the end of 23 who are the people going forward that they should um, look towards because knowing that Tom was, had, had retired and was stepping down that there was going to be a change. And, and overwhelmingly the support of the playing group, you know, the, the broader football club, the board, the football department, all the coaches, it was really, really clear that um, both these two young men were, were the right people to step up and, and take the challenge on. You know, when previous captains, you know, Travis was 24 when we announced Travis as captain, I think that worked out really well for Trav. You know, Tom and Ollie have had their turn and, and taken their moments, but 
I think it's a great opportunity. And that's why the announcement's a bit, for us, it's a bit earlier than we typically do it, but we think it's a really important moment that we make the announcement early so that Connor and Zach and the, and the broader group can get on with understanding the new program and the new people who are leading the program. That doesn't mean necessarily that the people who have been a part of that step away in any, in any way, they actually step forward. But these two need to, um, to, to basically find their own spot in this group and set their own style of leadership, which I'm really proud to see them step up and take it. Why Connor as opposed to Zach? Oh, look, you, you're, split, <laughs> you're, you're splitting hairs. You're splitting hairs. Two all Australians? Maybe? I don't know. No, they're both. They, look, they drafted together, they came together, they've worked together, they've been, they've been partnership together. Look, Connor, Connor, by his own words, he, he has got that little step ahead of Zach, I think, with the maturity part that he likes to handle. Zach can sometimes, <laughs> sometimes can blow up a little bit easier than the other. So he could, he's a bit calmer. I think he's been a great influence on Zach. I mean, um, you know, they're both, they're both incredibly important players, both basically, but, and they could both equally be captain of this club, but the reality is Connor's the right choice and Zach is the right choice to back him up. I think if you ask those two, they'll be pretty happy with the, the same positions too. Zach, you, yeah. uh, you must be over the moon to be in the role you're in and supporting Connor, but also as a key leader at the club. Yeah, I've actually spoken to him before. I've just Tom goes pretty quick, and if you look back four, five, six years ago when we got drafted, that yeah, you probably don't think you're going to end up in this position, but um, yeah, very grateful and honoured, and yeah, I'm looking forward to being his right hand man, and yeah, he's the boss, so I'll just do what he says. <laughs> as a leader, what kind of attributes do you bring to the team, and how, how would you describe yourself as a leader? Yeah, I think for me, I just want to make sure I'm playing the best footy I can as well, and lead by by action of anything, and then. Yeah, probably work on their relationships and uh, making my teammates better as well. Just a word on Oli. Handy's obviously served uh, co-captain previously, standing admirably last year, but not in the group at all. Just a, a word on him. Yeah, I think it's really important to acknowledge Oli. Oli's done an outstanding job in my entire time here. We came together. He's been uh, someone who's stepped up every time I've asked him to. And, and in, in these discussions, Ollie was one of the very first people that I had discussions with and to make sure that he was really comfortable with where things are at. Old by his own admission, uh, you know, he didn't have the season he would have liked in 23 from a performance point of view. I think this is a great moment for him to step into the supporting role and help help these two boys lead in their own way and also allow him to get back to playing his absolute best football. I, I couldn't ask him to be more supportive than the, when we had the discussion around what was the right, dis, the right direction for the club to take. He was the one who, as much as anyone said, let them know that it's their turn and it's their turn, opportunity to lead this football club, but I'll be there to support them. What does it say about the fact that the whole leadership group is, is new look in terms of the title of leaders? Was that a deliberate thing to have a, a fresh... I know these guys did a bit last yeah. year, but was it a deliberate thing? Yeah, absolutely. It was deliberate to expand the group. And that's what you do. You, you have emerging leaders coming through. And, and if you have an emerging leaders group, you actually allow, got to, you've got to allow them to emerge. And for that to happen, you have to have other people, you know, move aside, step, step sideways. They don't step down, they step sideways. They're still there. I mean, Darcy, Ollie, you know, Travis, all the people, Charlie, all those more senior players of our football club, all, all know they still play a really important part in the direction and the leadership of this football club. But to emerge your leaders, you need to give them some space. Speaking on that, um, everyone's obviously got their own story. Two years ago, CD uh, had a very public message to Sam. Um, seemed like at that stage he wasn't potentially a very reliable footballer. Now, not only is he one of your more reliable footballers, but he's a sense to uh, being part of the leadership group. And he's yeah, to that. 100%. He's one of the um, you know one of the people I'm most proud of in in my journey in football with his growth as a, as a human being, as a, as a man, and the way he stepped up in his, in his life, and, and not just football, in his life, I think he stepped up really well, but I think the three boys that are sitting underneath, they've all got their own story. Sam's is a fantastic story that we're all pretty aware of. I mean, Drewy, basically, as it said, he was walking around on a stump for a while. His foot was no good for the first couple of years, and we didn't know how much foot he was going to play. And then Dan is our last pick in a, in a rookie draft. They're now our, you know, our new emerging leaders of this football club. They're, they're all great stories, and that's why you need to let them come through because they've got these great stories that they can help the next young group come through with and they're connected to those groups really strongly. I think they're an incredible story and as much a part of this announcement as those three boys and what their, their journeys have been. There's been a lot of talk about long-term contracts. Uh, what are the risks of an eight-year deal? Are there risks? Oh, you'd be delusional to think there's not risks, but there's also a reward in, in, in that is, and I think the reality is if, if there's a better candidate for a long-term contract, I'm not sure where he is. Fit, fire and two All-Australians.
best and fairest. He's ready. He's, he's actually best footy still coming, and we all know that. I mean, Ben, sorry, we probably got him cheap. <laughs> we probably got him cheap, I reckon. That's what I would say. I don't think there's any doubt at all that um, Connor, um, Connor and Zach both will, will more than earn what they, they are looked after with. And eight years is, is, I just think it's great for our footy club. He's an Adelaide boy. He, he knows where home is. He's got his family sitting here with us. Why wouldn't we? It's too easy a decision, I think. Zach kind of mentioned um, a bit of work with Travis Head. Have you had any other kind of mentors or people in the leadership space who have helped you take a step forward? Yeah, I think uh, my person outside the field was Darren Cahill, so I um, quite with him a fair bit, and yeah, he's in a lot of space in elite environments with elite tennis players, so yeah, he was a good um, reach point for me and caught up with him a fair bit last year and um, developed a really good relationship there, but yeah, I think the main for me has probably been Kenny over the journey, like yeah, his office doors always open and he's been really good and supportive and yeah, I think he knows the right time to throw the arm around you and care, but um, also can be a clip when you need one as well. So, um, yeah, I think he's been as big as anyone. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate it. Don't be round of applause.